Hi everyone, welcome back to Math 112. This is Scott. Let's get started. So what we are going to be talking about today is section 6.3, in which we will be dealing with trigonometric equations. So, here's the basic setup. We will be given an equation that involves some, some trigonometric function, or possibly a couple of trigonometric functions. So, we are given an equation It involves the trigonometric equations or trigonometric functions. So, given an equation that involves trigonometric functions. We want to find the solution set. All right. So typically there is so often we will be given a specific range. Of solutions to find. All right. So let's uh, let's start with the first type. So the first type of equation that we're going to have to solve. So type one. So these will be equations in which we will be asked to find the exact solutions. So these are equations. where we want exact solutions. And this will be based on known values from the trig uh, from the unit circle. This is type one. All right. So, so uh, the way this will work. So our approach here. Is to do whatever algebra we can first. In order to get it into the form, if possible, of just trig function equals value. So use algebra to produce so something of the form, what we'll have here is trig function equals value. And then, so, uh, and then what we do is we use our knowledge of the unit circle 
to identify all of the angles in the first rotation that would satisfy this. So use use our knowledge of the unit circle all the angles in the first rotation that produce that value. And once we have identified those, and there will typically be two of them, then express these angles as the formula. So here what we'll have is angle one. plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, I shouldn't say formulas, and then if possible, angle 2. Two pi k, where k is again an integer. All right, and then step three, so this won't always happen, but sometimes what we will have to do then is we will have to take the, uh, take the argument of the trig function. So it might be just a, a bear of theta, or it might be more complicated. So use the, uh, so then what we do is we use these two formulas and solve each of them for theta. So set, so set the input, the argument, so that's the input, so set that um, argument equal to each of the formulas and solve for theta. So you see what this means when we actually get into it. And then what we're going to do is we have to identify then all the values of k that make our solutions fall into a specified range. So step four, find values of k that cause the solution It caused the solutions to fall into the specified range of solutions. All right, 
So let's actually just give this all a try here. And for the first examples, we're just going to um, solve each equation on the interval of 0 to 2 pi. zero, less than or equal to theta, less than two pi. Okay, so to begin with, let's just take something like this. So one minus cosine theta equals one half. All right, so first things first, we have a trig function all mixed up in uh, all mixed up in some equation, and we want to just solve for first the trig function to begin with. Okay, so step one, solve this for the cosine. Now we can do this by first add cosine to both sides. And that'll cancel the cosine from the left. And that'll give us 1 equals 1 half plus cosine theta. Then subtract 1 half for both sides. OK, so basically here what we have found out is that 1 half equals cosine theta. All right, so that has accomplished step one. We now have a trig function cosine equals a value. Now we just think about on the unit circle, if the cosine equals one half, what angles are we talking about here? And we know that there is one angle right here, which would make that happen. And that is, uh, that is equal to pi over three. And we know that there is another angle down here that also makes that happen. And that's going to be equal to, it's almost a full circle, but it's minus a pi over three. That's gonna leave us at uh, five pi over three. So these are known angles. And then each one will be true again every time you make a full circle from that, from that angle. And so we're going to have plus 2 pi k and 2 pi k. So then what we do is we take what is on the input here, the theta, and we have theta equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, and theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. Now, if the input here were something more complicated than just theta, we would have to solve for it using algebra. But it isn't. This is all there is. And so what we can just do is then plug in different values of k. So, so this is this or that. Okay, so then if we, if we start plugging in values for k, we can, uh, we can see what we're going to end up with here. And in this case, it's not very complicated to see because if we, um, so if we set up a table here, k, and I can just call these theta 1 and theta 2 in order to make my, uh, make my writing a little bit easier, theta 1, theta 2. We can just try out various values of k to see if they work. And it's always a good idea to start with k equals negative one, just to make sure. Sometimes it will happen that negative values of k will be in play here, and sometimes they won't. So we'll start with just negative one here. And sometimes it's a good idea to, to um, have a common denominator here. So that's also the same as six pi k over three and this is also the same as 6 pi k over 3. So sometimes it's uh, convenient to have that in, to have that noted. 
And so if we have pi over 3 of pi over 3 plus negative 6 pi, th 6 pi over 3, that's going to be negative pi, 5 pi over 3, which is not in the range. And similarly over here, if we do 5 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, that's also not going to be in the range. And when the theta is so simple, usually the negative values won't pan out. But every once in a while they will. All right, so then you try maybe 0. And so these are not in the range. OK, not those ones. Try k equals 0. So pi over 3 plus 0 times 6 pi over 3, which is going to be pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 plus 0 times 6 pi over 3 is going to be equal to 5 pi over 3. So those are both good. Check and check. And then we'll try k equals 1. So that's pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 is going to be 7 pi over 3, not in the range. And similarly, uh, if, we, if we try it on the other one, that's going to be 11 pi over 3, and that will not be in the range either. So, when you have just a simple little theta like that as your input, it's not going to usually be the case that you're going to be looking much at the values of k other than 0, but sometimes we'll have a more complicated input and we'll have to consider it. Okay, so then, our solution set. And here, here what we use, this is called a set brace. It's the squiggly version of, um, it's the squiggly version of the, of the bracket. And here you can just list out the ones that were, uh, that were viable. So pi over 3, that was good. 5 pi over 3, also good. No others. Any other higher or lower values of k besides 0 did not produce any actual solutions here. So those ones, uh, so those ones all worked out just fine. So that's how it goes when it is simplest. Now, a, uh, now, if what we are dealing with is maybe something uh, something a little bit more complicated, such as a tangent or a cotangent, uh, we can actually um, come up with some other stuff here. So note. When the solutions are exactly pi units apart. And that happens with tangent and cotangent, but also occasionally some other angles. We can combine the two formulas together. And what this will look like is you have a theta 1, maybe over here, and a theta 2 that's exactly on the opposite side of the circle. Over here, and they're exactly 180 degrees apart. Then what you can say is that theta is equal to just theta 1 plus pi k. And I'm going to stop writing the k's in the integer just because uh, that will always be assumed throughout this whole section. So this, if we just go half a circle over, that'll take us to this one. And half a circle back will take us back. And, uh, and so we can, we can put them together.
So that is just a, uh, a little side note here. And now if we try this with something like tangent, say tangent theta, uh, sorry, tangent theta plus one equals zero, we'll just go through the same process again and we'll note that when we happen to be dealing with uh, tangents or cotangents, because their period is only pi, will be in, uh, in the case that is noted by that note. And so if we solve this, we would just subtract one from both sides. And then when we look at the unit circle, we'd be dealing with pi over four, and then also uh, down here, this would be five pi over four. And because these are exactly pi apart, we can just sum it all up as not plus two pi k, but as just pi times k, because uh, because we have two we have two solutions that actually have more of a pattern to them than usual. So then what we have is theta equals pi over four plus uh, pi k. So this is like the combined formula. All right, and then we can just think about the different values of k and what they will make for theta. And we can note that this is the same as four pi k over four so that they have common denominators. And that'll save us the trouble of, uh, of having to add fractions in a weird way. So if k is equal to, and we'll just always start with a negative, and if it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out. So start with k equals negative one, and that's gonna give us uh, negative four uh, k over four, or sorry, negative four over four plus pi over four, it's gonna make negative three pi over four, and not in the range. We wanted zero to two pi for these ones. k equals zero, I'm gonna make pi over four, that is in the range. Try k equals 1, that's going to make 5 pi over 4. It's pi plus 4 pi. That's in there. And then the next one out would be 2, which would mean pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, which will be 9 pi over 4. That's bigger than 8 pi over 4, so no good. So then the solution set. is just going to be those two. So that's what we do if it's something like a tangent or a cotangent. Let's try another one. Let's try something like uh, root three times cotangent theta uh, plus one equals zero. So here we have once again um, something that we can just solve. So let's just see what that gives us. Oops. Cotangent theta plus one equals zero. Subtract one from both sides. That gives us root three cotangent theta equals uh, equals negative one. Divide both sides by root three. That means cotangent theta is equal to negative one divided by root three. Now you might go uh, go rationalizing this right now, but better yet, let's rewrite it.
as tangent theta by taking the reciprocal of both sides. And that's going to make tan theta equals, and then the, the numerator becomes the denominator, the denominator becomes the numerator, and that just makes root 3. Negative root 3. So negative root 3, if you remember how that works, uh, so tangent we can always think of as being the slope here, and this represents a negative and a steep slope. So that means we're talking about down here and also up there. So, uh, so up here, this one, if we think about what that's going to be, that's 2 pi over 3. And down here, what we have is, an, is the same as negative pi over 3, or if we if we think about it in terms of the positive version of the angle, that's going to put us at 5 pi over 3, and again, plus pi k. And that's because this is a tangent slash cotangent type situation, so the solutions are exactly pi apart, so we can, we can combine the formulas like that. So theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus uh, pi k. Now, if that is what we've got here, then what we can do is we can try the different values of k and see where that takes us. Now, if we want to sum this up in a, in a, in a way that has a common denominator with that, which is usually a good idea, it's going to be 3 pi over k over 3. So you just multiply the top and bottom by 3 to get a common denominator and that will then give us something we can more easily use. So k here, and theta here, and we can just always start with a negative 1 and see what happens. So if you put in a negative 1, what that's going to give you is uh, 5 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3, which is going to leave you at 2 pi over 3, one of the known, known solutions here. That's good. And then k equals 0, that's going to be 5 pi over 3. That's also good. But if we get any bigger than that, we're going to have 8 pi over 3, which is not in the range. And so once again, we have the two known solutions. Two pi over three, five pi over three. All right. Now, now a twist. There's a twist that we can put on these problems, and that might be that we are talking about something that involves not just a just a regular trigonometric quantity, but it might be that quantity squared. So, we can also solve equations where the trigonometric function is squared. And the key is to, so the twist here, and then the key to doing this is you just rewrite it so it looks more like an algebra equation, and then solve it using your knowledge of, of algebra. So the key. Right? As an algebraic equation S 
solve the quadratic equation that results and when uh, when we're lucky that results when we're lucky this will just mean uh, taking a square root say uh, when we're light slightly less lucky lucky this might mean um, this might mean factoring it and when we're least lucky of all this might mean having to do something like the quadratic formula although that won't really happen so use square roots or factoring. And that'll be what will mostly get us there. And then we can uh, we can see how that goes. So let's just try something like this. Uh, how about uh, how about as an example here? So this would be example D. Let's say that what we have is something like uh, four cosine squared theta equals one. All right, so first off, let's just rewrite that as like 4c squared equals 1, just to make it look a little bit more like algebra so we can, uh, so that we don't panic. Okay, so then if we want to solve this, the easiest thing would be just to divide both sides by 4. So that's 1 divided by 4. Then we take the square root of both sides. And then don't forget the plus minus. So this is plus minus. So don't forget the plus minus. Whenever you're solving these types of equations, you are trying to undo a square, and it might have been a positive or a negative before it got squared. So there has to be this. Now, if you remember your rules for uh, simplifying, uh, if you remember your rules for for simplifying uh, rational exp uh, radical expressions like this, the easiest way to do it is to break it up into two pieces, square root of top over square root of bottom. And then that will equal uh, just plus or minus one on the top and two on the bottom. So this is the cosine equals plus or minus one half. So that means that cosine theta equals one half. That's one one type of solution here. Or cosine theta equals negative one half. Now when we think about this on the unit circle, what have we got here? So we've got an x value of one half. We've got an x value of negative one half. And then we've got similar ones down here. Now, let's think about these. So what we have here is pi over 3. What we have here is 2 pi over 3. What we have down here is going to be 4 pi over 3. What we have down here is 5 pi over 3. And notice that these are, these are pi apart. So, 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 
So these two are pi units apart, and so are these two. So, um, so then what that means is that we have actually, we had originally four formulas that we, uh, that we could have produced here. We could have had 2 pi k, 2 pi k, 2 pi k, 2 pi k, but we can actually collapse them down into, into just uh, two combined formulas. So 2 pi over, so we have pi over 3 plus pi k, or 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. Whenever they're just pi units apart, that's, that's when we can combine them. So theta 1 pi over 3 plus pi k, or theta 2, 2 pi over 3 plus pi over k, or I mean plus pi k. And again, these are, these we can each think of as 3 pi k over 3, which will make it a little bit easier to do the next step, which is to consider all of the all of the options for the different values of k. So theta 1, theta 2. So we just always start with a negative value, make sure it's all, uh, it's all above board here. So pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3 is going to be negative 2 pi over 3. Not in the range. 2 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3 is negative pi over 3. Not in the range. 0. So when we look at 0, that one is going to be, that one's going to be fine. That's going to be equal to, uh, that's going to equal just pi over 3. That's good. And over here we have 2 pi over 3. Also good. And then when we put k equals 1, let's see what happens. We have pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3, that's 4 pi over 3. That's good. In fact, we knew that that was a solution. And 2 pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 3, also good. And then once we go past that, though, we can see we have exceeded the range that they gave us. They didn't have to give us that particular range, but they usually will. And so what we can do here is just make sure that um, make sure that we are still in range. So pi over three plus six pi over three is seven pi over three. That's too big. Uh, and then two pi over three plus three pi over three. Or sorry, plus six pi over three is eight pi over three. Again, too big. So the solution set here is we have the pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. All right, so this is what happens if we have in our equations nothing but just the simple theta on the inside of the trig function. Now let's shake things up a little bit here and throw in another twist. Another twist. So the other twist here is that the argument might be something besides just theta. So the argument is the input or the inside. Of the trig function. So if the inside of the trig function is
more complicated. Then just theta. We need to solve our formulas for the theta one and theta two. And to see what that would look like, let's go with something like this. All right, so this is example E. So let's say that what we have is something like the sine of three theta is equal to negative one half. So sine of three theta equals negative one half. All right. So the first step of this is actually not so bad because we just have to solve for the trig function and the trig function is already solved for. Okay. So now what we just do is just think, okay, sine of blank equals negative one half. Where is that on the unit circle? Make a formula and then that formula is what we'll have to end up solving for the uh, for the new thetas. Okay. So where we have the uh, so where we have our our two places here in our first rotation, it's going to be where the sine that's the y is negative one half. And where is that going to be? We're going to have one of them over here, so seven pi over six. We're going to have the other one over here, and that's eleven pi over six. So we have. 11 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Now these are not exactly pi apart, so we have to go back to the traditional plus 2 pi k formula. And so what that means is that so what that means is that 3 theta 1 so again here we uh, We've got, and if we just list them around, uh, the, the first one that we come to, it's over here. So three, so three theta is equal to seven pi over six plus two pi k. And then we also have three times theta two is equal to 11 pi over six plus two pi k. So now we have to solve each of these. For the theta one, theta two, and it'll be the same algebra we'll do in both cases. So you can divide them both by three, but it's easier if we instead just multiply both sides of each by one third. So cancel the three, you can do that by dividing both sides by three, but frequently the easier way to do it is to multiply by one over three. Okay, so what's that gonna give us? So theta one is gonna equal one third times seven pi over six plus one third two pi k theta two is going to be one third times eleven pi over six plus one third times two pi k and when we uh, when we multiply these out, um, we're going to have, we would just multiply across, so it would be 7 pi over 18 plus 2 pi k over 3, and then theta 2 is going to be, oops, that's theta 1, and theta 2 is going to be 11 pi 
over 18 plus 2 pi k over 3 and again uh, it'll be to our advantage to consider making these have common denominators and if I want to make this the uh, 18th I have to just think about what factor I have to multiply by. It would be 6 and 6, so that's 12 pi k over 18, and so is that. Okay, so now we can think about our various possible values of k. And give yourself some space on these for uh, for letting the letting the thetas uh, be reduced if necessary. All right, so we can try negative one just to start with. So it's going to be seven pi over eighteen minus twelve pi over eighteen is negative five pi over eighteen. Too big. I mean, too uh, too negative. And same thing over here. It's going to be negative pi over eighteen. So 11 minus 12 is negative 1. Too small. All right, 0. 7 pi over 18. And then uh, 11 pi over 18. Those are both good. Good and good. K equals 1. So now let's think about this. So K equals 1. So that's going to be... Uh, so it's going to be 7 pi over 18 plus 12 pi over 18, which equals 19 pi over 18, which is still less than 2 pi. It's only a little bit more than 1 pi. That's good. And then let's try this one over here. So um, so it's going to be uh, so it's going to be 11 plus 12 is 23 pi over 18. And the threshold is when the top is more than double the bottom. That's when we uh, that's when we've gone too far. So those are both still good. Now we try again. Seven pi over eighteen plus twenty four now. And sometimes the easiest way is just keep adding twelve to the previous um, previous numerators here. So that's going to be twelve. Uh, so add another tw add another twelve. It's going to be 31 pi over 18. Now, is that more than 2 yet? So 31 over 18. 31 is not double 18. Uh, 36 is going to be the threshold here. So we're still good. And then how about um, if we add 12 to this one? That's going to be 35 pi over 18. And if any of these are reduced, we would reduce them. And uh, they don't. And just keep going until we go too far, and then we'll know when to stop. So add 12 more to the to this one. That's going to be 43 pi over 18. Now that's big. that's more than double the bottom, so it's too big, out of range. And add 12 more, and that's going to be 47 pi over 18. Too big again. Okay, so we now have our answers, and we would just list them from smallest to largest in our solution set. And we're going to have 7 pi over 18, followed by 11 pi over 18, followed by 19, pi over 18, followed by 23, pi over 18, followed by 31, pi over 18, followed by 35, pi over 18. So this is what happens if you have an extra factor, such as uh, 3 on your theta. So what happened is that we, um, we ended up having to take our formulas that we came up with for the pi's 
And we had to realize that those were not yet completely uh, fixed yet. So we knew that the three theta, so each of these points represents uh, a value of the three theta. And that's what you have to do when you are dealing with a situation such as this, where the um, where the theta is not just by itself, but has some extra factor associated with it. All right, now the final iteration of this category of problem is going to be a situation where the argument of the trig function contains one more one more complication and an example of something like this would be something like sine of 3 theta plus pi over 18 equals 1 so what we have here is a more complicated expression involving the theta but the basic process is still the same. It just gets just gets a little bit messier with the fractions and whatnot. Okay. Well, once again, what we'll just do is we'll just think about. All right. We needed to solve for the trigonometric function first, and we and we don't have to really do anything there. We can actually already see what's going on. This is going to be equal to one. And sure, it's complicated, but at least the um, situation is relatively simple. And luckily for us, this is actually a spot where there's actually only one, one spot in the first rotation where this is true. So this is pi over 2, and then plus 2 pi k. Pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. So that's all pretty nice, actually, to begin with. So what that tells us is that 3 times theta 1, or we don't even need a theta 1 here. I'll put it there just because, you know, that's what we're used to. So 3, so 3 times theta over 1, or sorry, times theta 1 plus pi over 18 is equal to uh, pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Okay, now... If I want to solve this for the theta, then step one is subtract pi over 18. Now, the only two of these that are like terms are the ones that don't have the k. k you can consider to be acting like a variable here, and so the only two that can be combined are these ones. So it's pi over 2 minus pi over 18 plus 2 pi k. That's what 3 times theta 1 equals. And now here, a common denominator for these two fractions would be uh, 18. And so that is, let me just think about how we would convert those. So pi over 2, we would have to multiply the denominator by 9, so we multiply the numerator by 9 as well. So it's 9 pi over 18 minus pi over 18 plus 2 pi k and then that makes 8 pi over 18 plus 2 pi k and here wherever it's convenient to do some uh, reduction of fractions we might as well so we can divide them each by 2 that would be a factor that they share so we have 4 and a 9 we have 4 pi over 9 plus 2 pi k, and that's still equal to just 3 theta 1. So that was just us dealing with the constant term, and then to deal with the, uh, the 3, multiply both sides 
by one third. So that'll make just finally a theta one over here. That'll be one third times four pi over nine plus one third times two pi k. And then if we finally just uh, just multiply across, it's four pi over 27 plus two pi over three k. And then here, once again, if we want to think about this, uh, how we would put this into the same format as the other one is to figure out the factor that has to be multiplied by, has to be multiplied by in order to make it 27, that'd be nine. So this is the same as 18 pi k over 27. Okay, so then, we can start just listing out the k's and figuring out what theta would equal. So let's try negative 1 to begin with. So that's 4 minus 18 is negative 14 pi over 27. Nope. Let's try 0. 4 pi over 27. Now it's positive, that's good. And the numerator is not double the denominator, so this is within 0 to 2 pi, so that one's good. So for 1, let's see here, k equals 1, so it's going to be 4 plus 18. Is, and in fact, we're just going to be taking the previous result and adding 18 to the numerator each time until we bust. So 22 pi over 27, yep. Let's see, add another 18. 40 pi over 27, are we still in bounds here? Yeah, because 40 is not double 27. We're looking at for 54 is when we'll, we'll have gone too far. All right, what about three? So add another 18, it's gonna be 58 pi over 27, and that's too big. We were looking for when the numerator was double the denominator, and that happened because uh, 54 over 27 is the threshold here. All right, so the hard part about this was not actually any of the trigonometry. It was actually just the arithmetic of fractions, but the solution set here Again, for all of these problems, we were focusing on uh, on the range of uh, values that were solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So it's going to be 4 pi over 27, 22 pi over 27, 40 pi over 27. So that's the uh, so that's the added little extra wrinkle there. Now that was all type one. So type two, type two of the problems here. So this is I'm um, sorry, type two. So type one was all of the problems that involved. Uh, involved the uh, the specified range of 0 to 2 pi. So here, no specified range given. So this is find the general solution. All right, so here, we just want to find the formula and maybe it's one, maybe it's two. For the thetas,
And then when we do this, uh, after that, just as icing on the cake, we'll then plug in values for K to get six uh, sample solution values. All right. So an example here. So find the general solution. That's what this means. And list the first six. positive solutions. So that's the six least positive solutions. All right. And just as a basic example here, just to start, let's just say we have something like sine of theta is equal to negative root three over two. All right. So our process is not different. The only difference is that we are now just just interested in getting ourselves six solutions. And because we could just keep on adding values for k, we're always going to be able to get a bunch of solutions and we just want to have six the six smallest positive solutions here. So if we think about where this is going to put us, so negative three over three root three over two that's going to be the y values negative and low. So it's going to be down here. So this is, uh, so this one is known to us to be 4 pi over 3. This one is known to be 5 pi over 3. And plus 2 pi k, plus 2 pi k. So we have actually theta 1. 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And these are some somewhat simpler, at least here. And theta 2 equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And again, it's convenient to have common denominators. So that's 6 pi k over 3 and 6 pi k over three if we want them to match the other fraction there. And then we can just start listing out the k's. All right, so if k equals negative one, that's subtract six pi k, or six pi. So that's gonna be negative two pi over three, not positive. Uh, here it's going to be negative pi over 3. All right, no good. But now to generate the next solutions, you can just add 6 to the numerators at the top. So negative 2 becomes positive 4. And then might as well just uh, go down this one until we have a bunch. 4 pi over 3, add another 6, and it's 10 pi over 3. Add another 6. And that will be 16 pi over 3. And here we don't care if we are within the bounds of 2 pi or not. We just want six positive solutions. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look over here, see what we get. Um, if we take the 0, it's going to be 5 pi over 3. Add 6. It's going to make 11 pi over 3. Add 6, and that's going to make 17 pi over 3. And then, and then if, we, uh, if we were to keep going, these ones will be bigger than those ones. So this is, actually, this is actually good enough here. So 6 particular solutions. And 
And this is not the set of solutions anymore. This would just be a list because we haven't we haven't claimed to be getting all of the solutions any at this point. We're just giving six sample solutions here. So we'll just list them. Four pi over three, five pi over three, ten pi over three. 11 pi over 3, 16 pi over 3, 17 pi over 3. So these would just be six, six solutions that we found, and they happen to be the six smallest positive solutions. So find the six, the first six of the positive solutions here. Negative values of k will give us negative solutions and any values bigger than this will take us past 6. And let's try one more of these. Now what we will have, let's say, is something like this. Let's say that we have, oops, so this is B. Uh, so let's say what we for an equation is tangent of theta over 2 is equal to negative 1. And again, same, same instructions as before. Okay, so now what we do is we just think about the tangent equaling negative 1. And what does that mean? Well, if tangent is the slope, then that means we're talking about these two. So that's 3 pi over 4. And this down here is 7 pi over 4. And because this is um, a tangent, the answers here are separated by pi. So that means we can combine the two formulas. Oops, not have it 2 pi. We can just have pi k. So what that means is theta over 2 you can write it as theta 1 over 2 if you want, but, but or you can just write theta over 2 is equal to 3 pi over 4 plus pi k. Now, here we can solve for the theta. multiplying both sides by 2. So just as when it was 2 theta, we multiplied by a half. If it's theta over 2, we just multiply by 2. And that gives us a theta on this side. And it's going to be 2, 3 pi over 4, plus 2 pi k. And so that's going to equal, well, these, these reduce a little bit. So the 2 cancels. 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And now, once again, we'll find it convenient to express this in terms of a common denominator. So that would be pi k over 4. And we just have to think, OK, and sorry, over 2, I mean. And uh, in order to make that happen, I have to just multiply the top and bottom by 2, and so that'll be 4 pi k. All right. So we only have one branch of the solution here. And so what we just want to do is express all of the values of k up to the first 6 that will produce positive answers. Now here, uh, here for example, we have, uh, if k equals negative 1, we're going to have negative pi over 2. So never mind on that one. How about 0? So here we can just add up the line by just adding 4 to the uh, coefficients. So plus 4 pi over 2 becomes 3 pi over 2. And then the next one we'll just add 4. So 7 pi over 2. The next one add 4. 11 pi over 2. The next one add 4. 
that's going to be 15 pi over 2. The next one I had 4, and we just continue until we have 6 answers. We have 4 so far, and so that's going to be 19 pi over 2, followed by our sixth and final answer here, uh, 23 pi over 2. That gives us six particular solutions of theta equals 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 11 pi over 2, 15 pi over 2, 19 pi over 2, and 23 pi over 2. All right, so that's uh, type two of these problems, which is when we have a um, the requirement of just finding a general formula for all the solutions. Now, type three. So this is where we have a somewhat more complicated trigonometric equation. So. So this is where we would have to do whatever algebra we can to try to solve it. And we may need to uh, do something if there is more than one uh, trig function in play. So if there's more than one trig function in the equation, and we're having trouble factoring it. into expressions that each involve a single trig function and can be set to zero, then we might need some special facts. To help us. So Helpful facts. Okay, so we can use the uh, the Pythagorean identities. We can use these to make certain substitutions. So Pythagorean identities. So if I have sine squared x plus cosine squared, actually I guess I'll write thetas here, uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, we can use this to rewrite, rewrite the equation as sine squared theta 
equals 1 minus cosine squared theta or cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So these are two facts that we can use. Use these to substitute Uh, to substitute away a second trig function. So if we have sine squareds or cosine squareds, we should probably be open to the idea that we're going to have to use some sort of a substitution like this. Um, other helpful facts is uh, is that the 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 more complicated trig functions can be put into terms of sine and cosine or vice versa. So another helpful fact is that we can write um, we can write trig functions in terms of each other. So we can write um, we can write for example that tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. This is useful when we have both sine and cosine in the equation and they're not squared. So, but they're not squared. And then other facts Obviously, our cotangent theta equals cosine theta over sine theta. This one would be mostly useful for getting rid of a cotangent that we wish not to see. Secant theta, 1 over cosine theta, cosecant theta, 1 over sine theta. And these ones are primarily useful for uh, for swapping out the more complicated trig functions for easier ones. Use these to replace less familiar functions. All right, and then on top of these are your old even and odd properties, and those we can use to get rid of any negative theta. So then the last one here, the even slash odd properties. and use this, use these to get rid of negative theta. All right, so let's just see an example here. And for this, we are just going to be solving these equations. Solve each equation on the interval 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than 2 pi. 
All right, so when we need to, to bring out some of these helpful facts, they will be very useful. Sometimes, though, we might be able to get by with just a little algebra. So 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine theta plus 1, or say minus 1, equals 0. So let's just start with this one. So first off, if we want this to, uh, if we want this to resemble kind of classic algebra, we can just rewrite it looking more like variables. So 2c squared plus c minus 1 equals 0. So now we would just ask ourselves, what do we have to do to solve this? If the answer is we don't have the algebra to solve it, that's when we might need to go in search of something fancier, one of the other helpful facts. But this kind of equation, actually, we can solve it. We can solve it by just factoring, or if you want to, you can just use the quadratic formula. Now, if you're used to some, um, some of the fancier techniques of factoring, such as, the, uh, such as the AC method, as it's called, you could do that. Um, or you can just try to create the two factors that you would need in order to make this happen. So let's see, we need two things that multiply together to make 2c squared, and add together and multiply together to make negative 1 for the second terms. So we need this to be one of these positive, one of these negative. And since we need it to equal, uh, since we need it to equal a positive c in the middle, we can do this, because that way when we FOIL it, 2c squared plus 2c minus c minus 1, it all checks out. So then we can take these two pieces and turn them back into trigonometry, 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0, and then cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. Once you have it factored, you can uh, break it into two pieces and solve each piece separately. And so 2 cosine theta equals positive 1, which then means that cosine theta equals 1 half. Over here, what we have is cosine theta equals negative 1. Now these don't have anything weird going on with the theta, and so we don't have to be so careful about the k. Remember, the k, um, the different values of k only came into play when weird things were happening on the argument of the, of the angle. So here, if we just need cosine theta equals negative 1, that would be one of them, and that's happening at pi. If we need cosine theta equals 1 half, so that's x, so that means we're talking about this angle up here, which is pi over 3, or we're talking about this angle down here, which we can express as, as 5 pi over 3. And so, solution set is pi over 3 pi Five pi over three. So we don't have to worry so much about the k, where there's not something weird going on with the argument. And these types of equations that involve some of the fancier algebra, we won't have as much to worry about on that. But let's see what else we might have to do. So another variation on this same sort of a same sort of a theme might have us doing something like this. So let's say that we've got a cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus sine theta equals zero. So here we've got both the sine and the cosine involved, but the cosine, the only time it appears, it's squared. So what we can use here is the fact that cosine squared theta 
is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. And that in turn, if we write it in terms of uh, just kind of algebraic letters, would give us this. So then if we take the pieces here, we would have 1 minus s squared instead of the c squared, minus just s squared, plus s equals 0. So then, what's this going to mean? 1 minus s squared minus s squared plus s equals 0. So just writing it without the parentheses here. So it's just me substituting in for this. Then we have negative 2 s squared plus s plus 1 equals 0 which now is all expressed in terms of s, and we can solve in a very similar way to what we did before. You know, multiply by negative 1 in order to make it a little bit easier. 2s squared minus s minus 1 equals 0, which we can then factor in a very similar way to what we did before. 2s and s and then we have 1 and 1, we just have to decide which one to make negative. And if I want the overall result to be negative, I'm going to want plus s minus 2s. So it's going to be like that. So that when I FOIL it, s squared minus 2s plus s minus 1. And so that's going to give us 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. This, and this other factor is going to give us sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And then we can solve each of these. So this is going to be 2 sine theta equals negative 1, which means then sine theta equals negative 1 half. And this one is just going to be sine theta equals 1. So just add 1 to both sides. So... Those are the two facts that we can uh, that can get us to this result, and we just have to find the thetas that'll make that happen in the zero to two pi range. So sine theta equals one, that's going to be pi over two. Sine theta equals negative one half. So remember, sine is the y, so that's going to put us there and there. That's seven pi over six, and this one is eleven pi over 6. So then our solution set. So if we just list it from smallest to greatest as we work our way around the circle, pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Okay, we didn't have to use anything very fancy to do that. Uh, we just used factoring. Now, what about something like this? Uh, so, uh, so we had to use a Pythagorean identity, I guess, and then factoring. But what about something like this? So example C. Let's say what we have is 2 sine squared theta. And then that is equal to 3 times 1 minus cosine negative theta. All right. So first off, cosine is even, which means that cosine of negative theta is just the same as cosine of theta. So having the theta be negative has no impact on the result. So that's how that will have to go. And then, um, and then here, let's just see what, what, the, what this gets us. So this means 2 sine squared theta is equal to 3 times 1 minus, and now the, the negative that was inside this disappears. Okay, so that's 
2 s squared equals 3 times 1 minus c, which we can then just distribute this and make it 3 minus 3c. Three and now we look at this and we see that um, we, have a, we have a mixture of both of them in play. And so I want to substitute out the s squared for its corresponding c squared. So s squared is 1 minus c squared. That's a Pythagorean identity. And so we can just put that right into there. So then what that means is 2 times 1 minus c squared is equal to 3 minus 3c. And what I can then do is I can just distribute this out and see where it takes us. So 2 minus 2 cosine squared is equal to 3 minus 3 cosine. Move everything to one side. And just so that I can have the coefficient of the cosine squared be positive, I'm going to move everything to the right. So it's going to be plus 2c squared. Okay. And then minus 2. And so what's that going to give us? Just 0 equals 2c squared. Just putting things in the regular order of highest degree to lowest, minus 3c uh, plus 1, if I combine all the like terms. So then, now, once again, I would just try to factor this if I can, which, again, I can. So this is going to be 2c and c. And now we're going to have 1 and 1, and they just have to both be negative. And we now have 2c minus 1. So, or sorry, negative 2c minus c. And it's going to it's going to add up to the middle term there. So then we can take these, separate them out. 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0 or cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. And this means then if I add 1 to both sides, 2 cosine theta equals 1 half. This one means cos so equals 1. And that means that cosine theta is equal to 1 half. That's what I meant. This one over here means cosine theta equals 1. So then we are in a very similar situation to what we have been in. We just have to figure out where these things happen. And our interval here starts at 0. And it, does, it goes around, but it doesn't quite include 2 pi again. So that means we have 0 here. Uh, 1 half for the cosine means that we're at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So, once again, 0, just list them in order that you come across them. 0, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. All right, now let's do one last one that involves some of the uh, rewriting of functions in terms of others. And we'll just do something like tangent theta equals 2 sine theta. So if we have something like this, we have to try to figure out how we can rewrite it in uh, in a way that will make the most sense for our progress going forward. So one of the things that we might do here is just rewrite the, <coughs> rewrite the tangent as, um, as equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And then if we try to figure this out, we can, uh, we can then, for example, uh, just multiply both sides by cosine and divide both sides by sine. Uh, or 
actually, better yet, uh, let's multiply both sides by cosine to start with. And now, if we uh, move everything to one side, we'll have 0 equals 2 sine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta, which if we think about this algebraically is just 2sc minus s. And if you're trying to solve this, what you would do is you'd want to factor out the, uh, you want to factor out the s from both of these terms. So it's s times, and then over here, what you'd have is 2c minus 1. So then, as soon as you have a 0 on this side, then you can set s equal to 0, and you can set 2c minus 1 equal to 0. So in other words, sine theta equals 0, 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0, and this, once again, just leads us to the same conclusion that we've had already a couple times. 2 cosine theta equals 1, uh, cosine theta equals 1 half, sine theta equals 0. So we think about that, and that's going to put us here for the sine equaling 0, and then for the other one, the cosine equaling 1 half, that's going to be pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So once again, our solution set is going to be 0, corresponding with the sine equaling 0, then pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. All right, so this was the third type of equation. And now the fourth and final type, the type that is too hard for us to solve by our own our own native bristle and merit. We need the help of technology. So type four, the final type. Type four. So these are equations. We use technology to solve. All right, so the basic idea here, and this is solving by graphing. If you have an equation, And it's just like left hand side equals right hand side. Set up two graphs. Y equals the left hand side. Y equals the right hand side. then use technology to see at what x values the two graphs cross. And just as an example, uh, find all solutions on zero less than or equal to to, to theta less than or equal or less than two pi to the equation sine theta equals 
round answers to two decimal places. Okay. So the setup here. I just want to write down the setup over on paper, and then we'll uh, we'll switch over to technology to uh, to see this actually in play. So the setup here is, you would say um, first. So write the equation. with x for theta so it can be entered easier so it can be processed easier if you use a theta there's a chance that the computer might get confused about that so so sine x equals 0.17 then the two equations, so this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side, and the two equations would be y equals, so y equals uh, sine, the, sine x and y equals 0 0.17. Find the x values where they cross. All right, so we'll see that actually on the computer. Just wanted to write down here what the setup would be. Another, another example of something like this would be that maybe we have something along the lines of this. Maybe we have um, something like solve cosine x equals x. Round two decimal places. So here, once again, uh, I already wrote it with x's. If it had been thetas, then I would re-express it. But what I would just do is I would just go ahead and put it into uh, y equals cosine x and just y equals x and find, find x values. Where they cross. And then as a final sample of what these are like, so this is application problems. So if we're given an application problem, uh, just produce the graph of the function in question set up the graph for the other side of the equation and solve. All right, I just wanted to give um, give a rough sketch on that so that we could switch over to technology. All right. So now I have opened up Desmos Graphing Calculator. You can find that by just typing Desmos Graphing Calculator into any, uh, any search engine. 
and it will bring this up. Now, if what we want to do is solve the equation sine theta equals 0 0.17, such as from the example that we were just talking about, then what we need to do is first convert it into an appropriate form for a computer to understand. So use x's instead of thetas. And then equation one would be y equals sine x. Equation two would be y equals 0 0.17. So that's what we will be entering in here. So first y equals sine x. y equals 0 0.17. OK, now we should adjust the settings of the graph in order to give us the window that we are most interested in. So it said 0 to 2 pi. So we'll go to 0, 2 pi. And you can actually type in pi in Desmos, pi. And then, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, x, x axis, uh, 0 to 2 pi. And then if the y axis, as you see it, is not, uh, if it's a little bit out of, uh, if it goes, if it's a little bit bigger or smaller than you need it to be, you can adjust it. And I'll make it negative 2 to 2, just so we can see our graph a little bit bigger. And also, you can hit that if you want to make it even bigger. And then once that's out of the way, uh, you can find the points of intersection by just clicking, uh, just clicking toward near them. And we can tell then that the x, or in this case, actually theta, is equal to 0 0.171 or 2.971. And if we wanted to round them, to, to the specified precision, then we would just uh, round them to make uh, to make approximate solution set of uh, 0 0.17 and 2.97. So that's how we would present uh, the answer to that sort of a question. Okay, now let's hit reset. And let's solve the other problem. So the other problem in question was cosine x equals x. OK, so that's already in the, it's already got x's, so that's good. And now let's see, just make y equals cosine x and y equals x. Now here, you might want to reset your, your zoom back to a default, just in case the one that you have produced here for the last problem is no longer appropriate. <laughs> but let's see. So if we take y equals cosine x and y equals x, what we produce here is, a, um, is, a, is two graphs that cross at exactly that one point I can see right there. And I can see that here the solution set will be just that x value. So the solution set here would be just 0. Point, and if I just round it according to two decimal places, it would equal that. So this would be the solution set for that problem. All right, so what I wanted to show you right here. Sorry, I cut out there for a second. What I wanted to show you right here was what the application problems can look like, uh, as you'll see them in your homework especially. So what you'll have is a function like this, and uh, it wants to, and then it'll ask you certain questions. So this gives you the height of a Ferris wheel. Uh, as a function of time. So it says, during the first 60 seconds of the ride, at what time t is an individual riding in the seat on this Ferris wheel exactly 130 feet above ground? So the way we will go about this is we will take the formula as it has been given to us, 
and we will convert that into a graph on Desmos. And again, we can just use X for T uh, if that makes us more comfortable. Although Desmos is actually uh, is actually perfectly capable of doing uh, doing it with either T or an X. So here, so here, the way we can just do this is we can re-enter. So we can enter into this the uh, the equation for the height as it has been given to us. So it was 130, and then it was times uh, sine of 0. Point, check here, 0. Point, 105, 0.1, oops, 1, 105 T, so I'm going to write it as an X, uh, minus pi, pi over 2, plus 130. Okay, so right now what we see is uh, not an accurate picture of what our graph actually looks like. We need to adjust the settings to make this make any sense at all. And remember the x-axis it said over the first 60 seconds was what it said in the problem. So zero to 60 is what we are interested in on the x-axis. And then for the y-axis, just looking at this, I can tell that this is a function that has an amplitude of 130 and a midline also of 130. So I can tell that the, uh, that the y-axis is gonna have to go from a minimum of zero, so I'll make it like negative 10 to give it a little bit more room, to a maximum value of uh, of 260, so I'll make it go 270, just so I can get the full uh, full scope of it here. So that is a graph of the uh, of the the h of t. So I've just taken the equation from the from the problem and turned it into this. Now I look back at the problem and I ask and I and I look at what it wants me to do. So it says during the first 60 seconds of the ride, at what time or times are they exactly 130 feet above the ground? So then I go back to the Desmos and I just put in y equals 130 exactly. And here that gives me uh, two points in time and I have 10 pi or 100 pi uh, over 21 and then 100 pi over 7. Now uh, that's not a very convenient answer for me because I want it to be in decimals and the problem is that it's got that pi right there. So I'm going to put a decimal on the 2 and then try that again. Mm. Sorry, uh, I forgot that on Desmos that doesn't quite that doesn't quite work. So all right, I'll just uh, figure out what that is. Um, it's a hundred and it's a hundred pi divided by twenty one. So it's fourteen point nine five nine nine. So it's fourteen point nine five nine nine. That's the first one, and then the second one was uh, 100 pi over 7. And that's 44.8799 again. And now so so now I just got, I just have to uh, look back at the problem and see how it wants the answer. So it says, Round to the nearest integer as needed. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. So, so that was 15 and 45. 15 and 45, nearest integer is the nearest whole number. So t equals, 
15. 45 it says use comma to separate answers as needed. Now it says during the first 120 seconds of the ride, at what time is the individual uh, exactly 260 feet above the ground? And we would just go through a very similar process for that. So you would just adjust your window in order to make it fit the new, uh, the new constraint and you would put in the new value. So you can just go back to the Desmos. You can, uh, you can now, Oops, you can now adjust the uh, adjust the x axis to be 120. You can now adjust the the designated y value be y value to be 260, and you can see what values you get here. So you get 200 pi over 21. So basically, exactly double this previous one. So that's 29, and the other one. 29.9, so really 30 if it's going to round us, have us round to the nearest integer. And this is 200 pi divided by 7. That's going to be 90 if, it, if we have to round to the nearest integer. So back here, so it was, uh, so it was, so 30. And 90. They were each just double the previous answers, like so. And then here, over during the first 60 seconds of the ride, over what interval of time is the individual on the Ferris wheel more than 130 feet above the ground? So if we go back to it, we switch it back, uh, and we already know what the values were here. We just want to uh, to make the window match match up with it, so we can answer the question. And here, this was supposed to be now 1:30. Now it says, when was the individual in question above that height? So it'd be so it'd be from an x value of of this was 15. Remember, and this one was. 45, so it'd be from 15 to 45. And we just have to express that in whatever math format they, they want. So it says, type your answer in interval notation, use uh, integers or decimals for any numbers in the expression, round to the nearest integer as needed. So again, we are rounding to the nearest whole number so this is just going to be the time in between the two answers on part A. So in interval notation, it would be 15 to 45. And so that's how that's going to go. All right. So that now is how, uh, how, the, how the problems as you have seen them will appear on the homework. The other, uh, the other exercises on the homework are much more, uh, much more according to the pattern laid out in the earlier lecture, so we won't look at those. All right, well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Math 112. Uh, until next time, bye.